She should have known Eva was lying. Why? Her lies were blatantly glaring. But she had been too blind to see it because she was concerned with being in Uche's house and being envied by all the other girls. Why don't you come in? Uche offered. His heart was beating erratically. He couldn't believe she was at his door, looking as beautiful as ever. The new hair was his undoing. She looked absolutely amazing in it. He watched her hesitate, looking at Eva's retreating vehicle like she wished to grow wings. Uma looked at him and saw he was dressed in slim trousers and shirt. He looked like a young executive who was going to have drinks with his colleagues. I won't keep you. I see you on your way out. Not exactly. I don't know what games my sister is playing. But come in. I will get my jacket and take you home. She heaved a sigh and followed him inside. After Rush had been in his house before and all hell didn't let loose. She watched him pour himself a drink and swallowed it in one gulp. Then she really looked at him. He looked like he had lost some weight and her heart went out to him. She wanted to reach out and touch him and soothe away his pains, but she didn't dare. She didn't want him to mistake compassion for passion. But in a manner she was pleased to know that she wasn't the only one suffering. She could see it in his gaunt face. How have you been? Uche heard himself ask. She was looking as beautiful as ever. There was no indication that she had suffered. Why? He asked himself. Couldn't he just forget her? What was it about her? And the worst part of the whole thing was that it was from no effort on her part. I am fine. She answered and took a seat. I am sorry I'm here, but Eva told me you were out of town and she was just hosting a few friends here. I thought I was coming to an all-girls party. She tried smiling and he smiled back. That sounds like my meddling sister, he replied and took a step towards her. She panicked and looked for something to fill the silence. But I should have seen through her lies. Why would she host her friends in your house? He looked at her intensely. So why didn't you see through it? She stared back at him. There was no way she was going to tell him the truth. She was not going to shred her last dignity and pride and tell him that she was here because she wanted to feel close to him. Why didn't you see through her lies? Uche repeated again. I think your sister missed her talent. She's a very good actress. Mama answered casually, hoping he would believe her. I don't believe you. Okay, now what? She asked herself. Because there was no way he was going to know the truth. Not from her anyway. And not while he was a few paces from her. Do you have another explanation for it? Then why are you clenching and unclenching your fingers? She swallowed her next flow of words and looked at her tightly clenched fingers. She hadn't realized that she was doing that. She was only vaguely aware that she was fisting her fingers because they were only itching to do one thing, slide around his neck in a passionate kiss. Though you appear cool and unaffected, Mama, but I know it is not so. You don't know what you're talking about, she shouted at him. Don't I? He asked and walked over to stand close to her. She swallowed hard. The scent of his colon filled his nostrils. The sheer potent smell his proximity exuded quickened her breath, and she found it difficult to breathe. She sat back, wanting to put some distance between them. You must be insane to think I would want anything to do with you again after I guess we are both insane. She stood up and brushed past him. Even the slightest of all touches between them quickened her breath. She was very afraid that if he touched her then, she wouldn't have the strength to say no. So she stiffened, determined to rebuff him even if she was going to be cruel. Taunt me all you want. I have moved on with my life, okay? But I haven't moved on with my life. I am not ashamed to admit that I dressed up to come to your house. 
because I couldn't take the pain of missing you any longer. Ma stared at him, shocked. Could he be saying what she just heard? Or was her mind playing tricks on her? Was he not prepared to have a serious platonic relationship with her? What was going on? She needed some answers before her head exploded. Uche watched a series of emotions passed through her face. She looked at him intensely for a while, as if trying to be sure that he was not stringing her along. Uche couldn't wait for her to answer her own questions any longer. He drew her into his arms and placed a kiss on her lips tentatively. But he didn't put into account how much he had missed kissing her. So his intention of giving her a tender kiss was lost as he feasted on her lips. He couldn't believe what he nearly lost. He couldn't believe that he would never have kissed her again, held her again. He drew her closer and deepened the kiss, pouring all his worrying emotions into it. As she responded as feverishly as he was kissing her, Mama couldn't think beyond the fact that she was kissing Uche. Though there was some niggling voice at the back of her mind, but she was not listening. How could she listen when all she could feel was Uche, the love of her life, the man she had nearly lost, the only man she would ever love? Uche ended the kiss for want of air, but held her close. I missed you, he said softly. Tell me, did you miss me too? There was no way she could have denied it then. She wasn't herself. She was lost in him, in the warmth of his hands as they surrounded her. If he was confessing his feelings for her, then he must have accepted her the way she was. Her heart gave an excited lurch at that. He drew her down to sit beside him. It's not going to be easy, he said to her. She smiled tentatively at him. I know. I don't expect it to be. I am a man used to a certain way of life. It will take time to adjust. I want you to know I'm not going in for the title of Mrs. Okoha. That was never my intention. You are saying if I asked you to marry me now, you would turn me down? Only if you love me the way I do you. Ma was shaking. She had just told him she loved him. It was too soon. She scolded herself. He would think she said it to trap him. What was wrong with her? It sounded like what a schemer would say. And he was quiet. She had just revealed her heart to him and he was quiet. Very quiet. What was she thinking? Her only excuse was that she didn't have any experience with these emotions. But if his action was not love, what else could make a man like Uche Okoha miss her? She looked at him quietly. She wanted to ask him if he had her. But then she reasoned. If he hadn't had her, she could pretend she never said it. He stood up, going to stand by the French windows. She could only look at his back with dismay. Uche had never been this confused in his life. She loved him. Did she know what she was talking about? Was she for real? And was that her way of telling him all she wanted from him was marriage? What if she loved him? The question was, did he love her? That was a question he couldn't answer. He liked her well enough. He missed her terribly. He couldn't think of life without her. Was that love? Are you alright? He had her ask. But he was unwilling to look at her and let her see his confused state of mind. She stood behind him and wrapped her hands around him, and he placed his hands on hers. I didn't mean to frighten you. I know a lot of women have said those words to you. You are probably wary of them, but there is a difference. Those other women might not have meant it, but I do with all my heart. The second thing is that I don't expect you to return it. I am not going to use it to hold you captive and make you feel obligated to me. For now, knowing that you care for me is enough. He thawed and held her tightly. Just hugging her made him feel secure and safe. I need to sort out my feelings. Right now, they are too tangled up to make any sense to me. She smiled at him and sat down.
Take your time. He wasn't looking like he was about to bolt out of the door any longer. So why don't we go out and celebrate? She nodded and stood up. Did I tell you how breathtaking you look? Your mind was preoccupied, I guess. You look fabulous. So where do you want to go? Could we just sit by your beach? It is okay, but I'm just trying to sleep busy. Knowing my bedroom is five minutes away is not going to help matters. Uche, are we going to be uncomfortable with each other? Sex or the lack of it shouldn't deny us quality time with each other. Besides, I trust you. He looked at her hard for a moment and smiled with approval. It is my housekeeper's day off. We should ransack the fridge for snacks and drinks. He led her out of the living room. Mma sat opposite Uche on the beach. He poured them some non-alcoholic wine and smiled at her. Then he chuckled. What is it? I am laughing at life, he told her. Here we are, all over again. It's like running in circles and coming back to where we started. Except that we know each other better, he toasted her. To a new beginning. Tell me, because I'm dying of curiosity. How come you're still a virgin? Uma put down her drink and stared at him. She wanted to make sure she understood his question. They might be in a good place then, but their relationship was still on a shaky ground. You know, for a girl as beautiful as you are, it is a little too difficult to believe. I know what you mean, but I am still a virgin because it was a promise to God. I made a vow to him that if he helped me start my fashion house, I would remain a virgin till I got married. He looked at her, still puzzled. What pushed you to make that kind of vow? I mean, there are other things you could have promised him, like tight, some kind of offering or thanksgiving. At the time, the situation I found myself in made me promise that very thing. Tell me about it. Mama heaved a sigh and wondered where to start. She could see herself five years ago, going from one of her father's friends to another asking for help and the condition they gave her before she could get their help. Mama wondered if Uche would understand how she felt at the time as she related her experience to him. She watched the play of emotions on his face. As he listened, he was growing angrier by the minute. She was barely 21 at the time. Mama looked up at him. Before my father died, he taught me that a woman's virtue was her greatest possession and the greatest gift she could give her husband. So you could understand how I felt then. I decided that I wasn't going to give in to them and if God would help me, then I would not give in to those men or any other man outside marriage. Which he heaved a sigh. I have never regretted my decision before except the last time we were together. That day, I came very close to doing so. Of course I knew you might react the way you did, but then what choice did I have? It had to happen. You would have come to know one day, so the sooner you realize that I might not be able to give you all you needed, the better for us. Uche, to be honest with you, that far was the best thing that has ever happened to my life. It earned me respect, happiness, peace and joy. Otherwise, my life would have turned out differently. I would have lost it by now in search of vanity. Uche couldn't believe what was just revealed to him, or to put it correctly, what he had just been given. He saw her worried face, the conflicting emotions running through them. He knew right then that it was not an easy decision for her to make, and he respected her and the integrity she displayed by standing up to her belief. I am sorry I acted the way I did, but if I had known the story behind it, maybe I would have reacted differently. You could never begin to imagine what some girls have done to get my attention. So as I sat there and listened to you, I could only think of my other experiences, he told her and kissed her fingers. But you are different. Even then when I was angry, I knew you were. And as soon as I got to my car, I knew I had made a mistake. But pride kept me from coming back. I was just a breath away from calling you back and damning the whole vow. But I guess my fear of God held me back. 
It is ironic, Uche spoke softly. I could have lost an angel. I am not an angel. I'm just a girl trying to live a decent life, she smiled at him. There are not many girls like you out there, and I consider myself lucky to have you. A part of me believed you would say something like this to me someday. She smiled at him, then she placed her hands on his. It's not going to be that bad. I'm going to show you that relationships could be enjoyed without sex. The best ones are the ones we are not blinded by lust. This way, we could get to know and enjoy more important things about each other. Hmm, and a philosopher too? Uche asked jovially. Among other things, she agreed. My celibacy wouldn't be for too long. Ma stopped smiling, shocked at his words. Are you saying that you would have other women who will be seen to your sexual needs while you wait till I'm ready? She sat up, facing him. I know I have no right to ask a life of celibacy from you. But at the same time, I won't have you cheating on me. So the choice is yours. She said, trying to choke back tears. I was only saying that I won't have to live a life of celibacy for a long time because we will get... He trailed off. What was he thinking? He was just one breath away from asking her to marry him. I don't understand, Ma said. Her heart was jumping. She felt Uche was about to ask her to marry him. She was so sure of that. Why did he stop? She didn't want to push, so she kept quiet. He leaned over and kissed her, and all thoughts about what he was going to say fled from her mind. It is getting late, and I still have to drive you home. Ma could feel her depression starting. She was sure he was going to ask her to marry him. Why did he stop? Was he that scared of marriage? Or was she the one he wasn't sure of? She promised she wasn't going to push, but it was frustrating. Uche opened the car for her, but before she could enter, he gave her a hug. I am glad we made up, he smiled at her. Even though it is a bit awkward, don't worry, we'll get used to it. She saw a shadow move and looked up abruptly. What is it? I thought I saw someone. Must be the guard. Would he be hiding in shadows? Babe, nothing can get past this gate without permission. Okay, she agreed reluctantly. As they drove away, he drew her in his hands and drove with the other. She relaxed in his hands and closed her eyes. This time, when the love music wafted into the air, she didn't become scared or sarcastic, but they looked at each other and smiled into each other's eyes. The one who had been watching broke into tears. The one who was mightily in love with him. The one it was obvious he would never love. I am going to get her. My heart beats with every thought of you.